Hello, I'm Andrew Dyer, and welcome to another edition of the Round Ball Report, the only show in the area dedicated to highlighting extras of the high school, college, and professional basketball teams which play in the Washington metropolitan area. And joining us again this week via telephone is my co-host, former University of Maryland All-American, the head girls basketball coach at South Lakes High School, and the voice of the Washington Mystics, Christy Winter Scott. Christy. Hey, Andrew. Hey, how are you? I understand the, they've got great news ahead. The Mystic season is just about over. Oh, well, if you're saying great news because it's over or great news because they're going to get a great draft pick for next season, which could be a number of players, but... Uh, could be Brittany Griner, so you never know. Yeah, and Chrissy, our first guest is going to want to talk all about that. Why don't you introduce? <laughs> well, I am sure we're going to have a lengthy conversation with one of our favorite guests <laughs> to the studio, Coach Butch McAdams of WOLB, sir. Welcome back. Well, can we use the amnesty clause for a whole league? <laughs> wow, you know what that is. I know we can amnesty point. players, but can we amnesty the whole WNBA? <laughs> no, and you know what? That's not even nice. And Andrew, I'm mad that you're laughing. See, and you have a daughter. That's not right. Title IX is in its 40th anniversary, and, you know, we are in an exciting excited to have professional women's basketball in the United States. With that being said, <laughs> the Washington Mystics have obviously been struggling this year, but there have been some bright spots in terms of their effort, and Monique Curry, who is from the area, has really been doing a great job. No comment, Coach? <laughs> Come on, Butch. <laughs> Well, Coach, one thing I did want to talk about, in, in an all sincerity from a media perspective, yes. the league, uh, I, you and I are both proponents of women's basketball. You're not the biggest fan, or not a fan at all of the WNBA. But college, I love Right, a huge you love the fan. college game. Right. But one of the challenges that, in terms of, especially in this media market, mm -hmm. how a scenario could exist where you actually, not just this market, but the entire league, where you openly have one team, Phoenix, who has Diana Taurasi, yes. that shut down their entire roster mm -hmm. um, for the sole purpose of trying to increase their chances of getting the number one pick, which will be Brittany Griner. Mm -hmm. And you have a Washington team that, on the other hand, has tried mightily but just can't find a way to win. Right. Uh, but yet th that yeah. there is no attention to the fact that right after she played the Olympics, it was fine, but yeah. they've shut her down with, with her WNBA team. Well, look, I mean, the league needs a star, mm -hmm. regardless of where Brittany Griner goes, if she goes to Phoenix or here in D.C., the league needs a star, and she might be that person to jumpstart the league, uh, you know, like a Magic Johnson and Larry Bird did mm -hmm. for the NBA in, in the late 70s. I think they've got it right. I don't like this lottery. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you have the worst record, then, hey, you get the first pick. There, there's no lottery in the NFL. There's mm -hmm. no lottery in Major League Baseball. But there, and there are also things in the best interest of the game. We don't allow a team to just basically just throw, the, throw their season for the purpose of trying to get that number one pick. Well, but, but again, I think that's on their team. If, if they want to sacrifice – a, a whole season mm -hmm. and and lose a, a, a fan base, then you know what? That's that's the roll of the dice that they have to take. But I'm I don't like this this whole lottery. Now, now, Chrissy, I know that's the most I'm going to be able to get out of coaching a WNBA. But you being a WNBA insider, as the, I've seen in the past, where they have um, made it a scenario where they've somehow been able to get the marquee players into media markets that are most advantageous to promoting the league. I mean, given that Washington, even when they had a, 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 have had horrible records in the past, in the past have always had a good fan attendance, and and then it's uh, preferable on the East Coast. Do you think even if Phoenix ends up with the with the worst overall record? that the league may somehow uh, finagle a way that if the Mystics don't get Griner, that uh, Tarasi or some other big star ends up here? Well, you know, it, it's obviously left to, to be seen, but um, just to kind of jump on what, what Coach said, and then I'll, I'll come right back to that, but um, you said that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird jump-started the NBA in the 70s, but I think there were some really great players ahead of those two guys that, that could play a little bit like Will Chamberlain and maybe Sam Jones, those guys were, were pretty good. So there are some great players that are playing in the WNBA. And to get to Andrew's point, in the collegiate basketball tournament, they usually try to get the teams to stay in the media market. So, yes, that does make sense even on the professional level. 
but if the lottery somehow does not serve uh, you know, a team like Phoenix, just for instance, if they do have the worst record and for some reason do not secure Brittany Griner, you know, that is the closest, you know, obviously San Antonio would be the closest, but they're doing well, but that's the closest team to her media market. So with that being said, I don't know if there's going to be any huge changes to mega stars and, and two- and three-time all-star players shifting around the league. I think that it's just going to you know, <laughs> be up to chance, and I think that's the, the mystery of it all. And you know, Tulsa is another team who is um, in the talks for not making the playoffs this year, as well as either New York or Chicago. So those two teams are fighting for the fourth and final spot in the East, so they don't have that bad of a record, and they have a great team. So just think about if one of those top players goes to one of those teams. So it's going to be tough. And, you know, with Elena Deladon being from Delaware, that's obviously closer to D.C., and you're thinking about the media market there. And I know for sure that the Delaware women's basketball team has already pretty much sold out all of their home games already. Um, to their season ticket holders there and their booster club and everything. So there's definitely a following for her, and I think that it remains to be seen, obviously, who goes where, but I think it makes sense to keep players yeah. in their market. But I think Brittany Griner is such a game changer. It doesn't matter where she goes. You know, listen, in, in, in all sincerity, while I wouldn't pay a dime to watch the WNBA. Oh, but. I, no, wait a minute. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. While I wouldn't pay a dime to watch it, I certainly want it to be. Meaning that I think that all of the little girls who aspire to play basketball beyond college should have that opportunity. And I think that the women who don't get an opportunity to coach men's teams should have that opportunity to coach. And, and so from that perspective, I'm in favor of the league and I want the league to survive. However, let's be real about this. Christy, there's got to be too many teams. There are not enough players to fill out a league with the number of teams that are currently existing. Oh, I disagree. I disagree because there are 11 What's the players attendance on each average? team. What's there the are 11 attendance? players on each team. And, you know, that there are players who are sitting at home right now who have been released they could make up an entire team. The talent level. But who's going to watch him, Christy? And I'll do respect. Who's going to pay to watch him? You can ask the fans that'll be watching the Minnesota Indiana game tonight. Those fans are going to be watching. There are a lot of people that watch, and just and I understand that that you don't have the love for the WNBA for whatever reason it is. There are players that are fantastic. The women's basketball Some. team and the Some. and, and the Olympian. They've won five straight gold medals in women's basketball. There's a high level of respect for what the women's basketball players have been able to do over the course of time. And to have a professional league here, it needs to be embraced. And I think once it is fully embraced by the public, I think that it'll, it'll flourish. But, and I but think at there, are, what point? there are a lot of players that are sitting at home that can flat out play, that aren't on a team. So Christy, but I, I at think what there could point? But, but at what point will the fans across the nation fully embrace it? That's my point. Now, you know, you're going to have the successful franchises in, in a few cities. But my point again is I don't believe that there are enough good players mm -hmm. to, to fill out multiple rosters uh, that exist now. Hey, there's a debate whether or not there are enough good players to fill out an NBA roster with some teams. Well, as long as you say that, too, I, you know, I, I just think that, you know, that's just a little unfair with, you know, you saying that you're a fan of, of college basketball for, for women and you know that there are several uh, fantastic players, not just, the, you know, the top three like Skylar Diggins, Elena Deladon, and, and Brittany Griner. There are much more players out there that can, that can get it done and that you've seen, obviously, if you're a fan of women's basketball on the collegiate level. So Alyssa Thomas right there at Maryland, All-American as a sophomore, you know, there are great players right in our own backyard that will be playing professional basketball in the United States where the people, there are people that, you know, don't like to watch tennis, 
but there are great tennis players. There are people who don't like football, but there obviously are great football players out there. So to each their own with that. And Christy, I'm just thankful that you are on the telephone and not in studio, or Me you too. might, or, po- or coach might have pushed your buttons where you threw a basketball at, at him like the risk is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I've, heard, I've, I've heard there's a vein that comes out of my forehead and it is out. So just for FYI for that, but it's all love. But, but I love you, you know, Christy. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on. Let's move on to, away from the WNBA and uh, and coach. Now I know it's round ball. Football is the, kind of an oblong ball. Right. But but talk about what's your perspective on on the fewer around um, uh, Robert Griffin III, and not just the fact mm-hmm. of what he represents on on the field, but mm-hmm. for, for a guy that's that pre, pre, uh, immensely athletic. Mm-hmm. With the evolution of the African American quarterback, to hear people talk about his intellect as being one of his most important uh, characteristics. Well, I think his most important characteristic, what I've observed at this point, is his poise. Mm-hmm. Extremely poised quarterback. I, I don't know if I've witnessed uh, a rookie, a first year quarterback, mm-hmm. playing in only two games mm-hmm. as poised as RG3. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's the real deal. Now, mm-hmm. how good he'll be, I think that remains to be seen, but. I think this guy is a legitimate starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, he's going to need some help. Mm -hmm. He's going to need some help, and I don't think he's got a lot of help at this point. Now, I only said that to, to, to transition into the fact that we got him as the cornerstone of a young superstar. That's right. We got the Nationals with Strasburg and Bryce Harper. Right. Now, the Wizard with, with John Wall. Where, no. are, you, where, where no. are you at on John Wall? No. And we got Ovechkin. Do, where are, we at, are you well, at on John Wall? Well, I don't Wall? think, you know, again, John Wall is a very good player, <clears throat> but I don't think John Wall is the type of player now or tomorrow or five years from now that can carry a team. I think he can be a key component of a team, but but he's not a a Derrick Rose type player. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I you know I don't see it. I don't see. You it. think he's more of a Rajon Rondo than a I, Derrick Rose? I think so. I, you mm-hmm. know, at best, I think so. Right now. Now, Christy, um, <clears throat> what's your thought process on that about John? Is he ready to make the big leap? I haven't heard much about him this off season, as opposed to in the past. Well, I think that's because he's been at the gym mm-hmm. and he's been working. And uh, obviously, you know, this is his third year coming up, and he was the number one overall draft pick, so a lot of pressure. And I think that's all gone right now in terms of what he's able to do <clears throat> and his potential. I think this year, I think he is already a, a great leader as a young player. And I think, you know, Flip Saunders said that he reminded him a lot of Kevin Garnett in his rookie year and having all the How did that work out for Flip? And I'm not, well, I'm just saying in terms of his personality, in terms of his, and he does have a good heart. And this kid, he understands it. And he's not just yeah, telling you the politically correct answers. He is truly feeling what he's saying. And he's doing what he's supposed to do to get his game better. And I think he's going to be, vastly improved from last year. I will All right, say Christy, that. we're going to pick that, pick up on that on the other side. I got to go to a quick break, and we'll could see if uh, in, the, in the 10, 12 years we've had, Coach, if this will be the season he has something positive to say about the Washington Wizards, other than the fact that he's positive they're going to be horrible. We're going to back on the other side. We're Coach Bush McAdams and Christy Winterscott, so stay with us. <laughs>